All right, YouTube. So, a little quick review here about my Poolin Pro 5020. Now, some of you probably just heard that and thought, well, those are garbage junk saws. No one wants to own junk. Why would you want to talk about that? Well, bear with me. Now, again, some of you have already made up your mind, and I can't stop you from liking Still or Husky. But to those of you that are maybe uh, on a limited budget or you're, you're unsure, let's have a little look at this here. I'll show you a little bit, a few things about these saws. Now, the first thing I want to mention about the Poolin Pro, and a lot of people, it's probably the number one complaint that I, I've heard from other guys that use saws and, and whatnot, is they say, well, you, you start it up and that's great, and you run the saw and you cut your firewood and you shut it off to, to refuel and, and file the saw, but then when you go to start it back up again, it won't start. And I've heard a lot of guys say that really makes them angry. So I want to show you guys something that some of you may or may not know. And it's, it's, a, it's a fairly easy, simple solution to that problem. So we just take the cover off here. And once you got the cover off, all you're going to do is you're going to take your scrunch tool or your bar wrench. I refer to these as bar wrenches. But that's just how I was taught. And you're just going to come in here and we're going to take off, loosen off this spark plug. And now on these spark plugs, if you guys can see, there's a gap there. Now, when you first get these pool and saws, the gap on these saws will not be very big. It'll actually be very small, almost non-existent. You almost won't even be able to see through the, you know, where the gap is. So what you want to do is you want to gap your spark plug to 30 thousandths. You can just go to your local saw shop and ask for a gap, spark plug gapping tool. It's just a round, small disc, metal disc. And you gap your spark plug to 30 thousandths. And once you've gapped your spark plug to 30 thousandths, you just put your spark plug back in your chainsaw and you've kind of solved that problem because what will happen is, is you will go to use your chainsaw and you won't have that problem of starting the saw and then not being able to get the saw to start again. And it, that really is just the, the simplest way to fix that problem. And a lot of, a lot of guys will say, yeah, well, you know, you just go buy a still, you know, and not have that problem at all. Well, yeah, you're right. And maybe for some that will work. Some people, you know, maybe they've got that $700 or $800 to buy that still. And, and if you have that kind of money, by all means. Not everybody has that kind of money to put up for a chainsaw right away. So that's where, in my opinion, chainsaws like this, they're more affordable. They come in handy. And if you're not doing, you know, production falling and you're not a, a, a logger and you don't need a saw for, for, you know, commercial, you know, industrial type use, uh, these types of saws will work great for just your backyard, you know, cutting up the odd bit of firewood or, you know, taking with you on a, a hunting or a camping trip, throw it in the truck, right? So these, these, type, these saws here are good for that. Um, one other thing I will mention that about these saws that... Uh, you know, can be kind of finicky at times, touchy. Some people find it. I, I I haven't had that problem too much, but it may be an issue for some, is how to get them to start. Now, one thing that's nice about Poolin is that the instructions for starting the saw are right there. So it really is that simple. Um, and some guys will go, I don't need instructions. I know how to start a saw. Well, truth be told, if you follow the simple instructions that are right on the picture on the saw, the saw will fire up every time. Uh, there's there's no no fighting with it. You just do exactly what the pictures show, and the saw will run no big deal. So there's that. Uh, another thing I'll mention to, to maybe to people that don't know or are thinking about it is that when you're going to sharpen your saw, is think about getting uh, a, a, a sharpening tool like this one. Now this one's made by Still. 
and this is a great tool. If you don't have one of these or you've never heard of, of these tools before, these are, are a great tool to have for sharpening your saw. I mean, when I first saw these, I thought, yeah, that's just another piece of junk that, you know, it's a gimmick, right? Just trying to make trying to make a buck and, and, and get the suckers. Well, a friend of mine had one of these and he said, no, you got to try it. Just, you know, don't knock it till you try it. So I went out and bought one. And these are great tools to have. I'm, I'm really glad I bought one because it makes filing just that much easier. Um, you can't really, show you, guys, you can't really screw up filing your saw because all you got to do is you just find your, your tooth that you're going to work with. And there's lines right on these things that line up with the bar. And there's arrow, an arrow on either side of these that shows you which way to push your, 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 your saw tooth. And you just file, and it's it's that it's that simple. The tool is that easy to use. Um, the local saw shops will have these, but please remember that when you are going to go in and pick up one, if you decide to get one, that they're not all. It's not one size fits all. So you need to go into your saw shop and tell them the size of saw you have and what make and model you have, and your saw shop will be able to help you determine which files you need to go into this because when you buy this it's just an empty shell you buy the files the round files and the the, the raker files or the depth gauge files to fit inside this this frame here so uh, go to your local saw shop if you want to get one of these they'll be able to help you get the the right files for it and it is an absolute time saver and i'm actually really glad that i bought one of these and uh you know listen to what my the advice my friend gave me so other than that, folks, um, these saws are not as bad as everyone likes to, to say they are. Um, you're right. They're not a steel and they're not a husky. But for the money you pay for them, they do work. And like anything, uh, maintenance is key. So if you take care of your, your tools and your equipment, your tools and equipment will run regardless of the name on the side. So I, uh, I hope that helps some people. I hope that, you know, that gives people reason to not you know doubt and and claim that well just because it's you know pool and it's garbage so all right guys i just wanted to show you that and i hope that helps somebody and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video